Switzerland, as well as to all people out there following us during this live Hadi webcast worldwide. A special welcome to our, but also my guest, David Cho. Thank you, thank you. David, thank yes. you for being here at the winery and being part of the wine and art exhibition, My Fan Back. That's my pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Last but not least, I want to introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Mathieu Ivo, and the initial capital letters of my name, M and J, joined to the company's name Fanbeck, stand for this unique happening, my Fanbeck. Good. I want to explain two, three words about the artistic concept behind my Fanbeck, because it's a trick to present you. <laughs> the eight canvases David painted on are built of 84 wooden wine cases made of organic wood. When the expo finishes end of November 2013, each canvases will be taken apart and in each case the organic wine from the surrounding vineyards will find their way into these cases. So, apart uh, from getting a unique piece of art of David Cho, with every case of wine you will get six outstanding bottle of organic wine from my winery. Some information about the wine inside. The first four canvases will be filled with the Bio Domaine Chateau Blanc Vintage 2012, a blend of Johannesburg and Sauvignon Blanc known here as Haida or Payen. The wine were aged in double barrels of 450 liter each for six months. The remaining four canvases will be filled with the Bio Domaine Chateau Rouge, vintage 2012. It's a blend of 50% Merlot, 25% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 25% Cabernet Franc. The cuvee was aged in French barrels of 225 liter each for nine months. Well, now the most important thing. You can order the wine cases with an original section of a painting from David Cho with organic wine from my winery inside under www.myfanbag.com. The orders will be served on a first come basis and will be shipped worldwide in December 2013. As part of the wine and art package, you will get for every order a free DVD showing the way the cases were being painted as well as how the wines were produced. Don't hesitate to order today and please share your experience with friends and family. Dave, let's rock and show everyone what you have done for us in the last couple of days. Please, show is yours. Thanks. You know, I try not to put too much thought into the painting, so he, is, he asked me to paint uh, eight of these canvases in uh, the week that I was here, and so I try to take into consideration that it's being painted on uh, boxes that it's going to be split up, so I try to make the little pieces in each one, and yeah, I uh, try to take in, uh, you know, sort of Switzerland and the whole country and the vibe of, of it, so the, the paint is much less angrier than usual. Um, so yeah, enjoy, enjoy the show, this is uh, pretty much 
you know, I, I, I paint a little bit and I paint over it and I'm just having fun with a little bit. A little bit? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. He was painting non-stop for, uh, from Monday to Friday and every time I was thinking this is great what he has done, he started over again. So it was a week uh, from frustration uh, going to an absolute tie and at the end, you know, I trust today and say, well, what you've done is great. Thank you, Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I think we're going to take a glass of white wine now. Okay. Hope they will come because uh, <laughs> this makes every day better, you know? Yeah. And then we probably can go from one to one and just have a little chat about sure. it. Okay. Good? Uh, saying, 
Uh, this saying means uh, sport zu hören. So that means brain, bird, bird brain. Yeah. But that means somebody that is destroyed, you know, that is basically <laughs> having trouble, facing troubles. I love that. That's all sad. I was so scared you paint over again. Oh, no. <laughs> I said, well, if you paint over, that's your job. I was really scared. I love that. David. I'm an artist from Los Angeles, California, and I am in Switzerland right now. The last time I was here, I was 18 years old, and I was in a Porsche with an Italian man, and we just ran through really quick, so I didn't get a chance to see it in the daytime. Uh, the food is delicious. The, the whole country is beautiful. Um, I don't think um, my grandfather or any of my ancestors ever expected uh, a Korean to be in this country. But I'm here, and I think they would die if they saw how much cheese I've eaten. That graffiti is vandalism. That's what it is. And so it gets twisted a lot because people are like, no, graffiti is art. And it's like, no, real graffiti is, it's vandalism. It, it could be pretty or it could be ugly, but it's, it's, a, it's in a different context. When I come to Europe, the people that I see buying spray paint at the stores is couples, families, little kids. In America, if you're at the spray paint store, the people coming in are teenagers with hooded sweaters on. That's like what you expect. Uh, my career in graffiti has actually been pretty short. I've not spent, you know, not to shatter any illusions, even though I'm wearing a butthole shirt. Like, I've not spent that much time, uh, maybe like my early teens, actually destroying tons and tons of public and private property. I mean, who am I bullshitting? I, I still do it a little bit now, but for the most part, like, 
it's just a very sexy word, I guess, especially in this day and age. I've, I paint murals, I spend 90% of my time doing watercolors. Um, I don't know, I, for, for the most part, I consider like anything from like spray paint, acrylic, oil, like all the real, real man, tough guy, whatever paint to be, they're actually, those are the most pussiest because you can do anything with them and it's forgiving. Like I can paint something right now, it'll be dry and I can paint over it, so there's no, there's no fear there. But then to, to use watercolor, it's like painting with magic. Like when I paint with watercolor, it's, it's like um, if you mess up even a little bit, then you have to start over. Like I'll paint on people, buildings, places, things, it doesn't matter. Like Just two, three days in of painting on the white wine crates, I'm using so much paint on some of them that the wood is starting to warp, which I think is pretty cool. Like a lot of my earlier paintings that I did when I was younger was on wood that I would find on streets and signs and bus benches and stuff. So when people come to my house, they just like to like look around and try to grab drawings and paintings I have. It's easier now than to just go here, just grab some wine. There's my art on the label and you could drink it too. It's functional. My, my entire career with doing art, it's always like show after show after show and trying to make rent and and I was like one day one day when I have the time to just spend years developing these masterpieces that's what I'll do but it's been over three years since my last art show and I have these huge canvases in my in my studio that I just paint over and over again and without the threat of a deadline they, they, they just never like I'll paint something and the I'll come to work like a week later and look at it and go, this is the worst thing I've ever painted and painted over. So these paintings in my warehouse right now have like 30, 40 different layers of paintings on them and they'll never be finished because I'll just paint over and over. Um, so to come here and, and them, you know, the winery says I have a week to finish eight murals, that's, that's like a real deadline. That's like, I think that's how I function the best. So even even half of these paintings have different paintings under them or have switched into something else uh, throughout the week. And I think that affects, that, you know, that comes from how much cheese I eat or how much sleep I got the night before. Or, or uh, I, I'm just having fun. I like to think these are gonna be seen sideways on a wine bottle of people drinking. So I'm playing with that. And this, the, the one with the, there's a couple with one's wearing red cowboy boots, the girl's wearing red cowboy boots, and the guy's wearing red tennis shoes. That one I named Red Shoe Diaries, which is based off of uh, some soft core uh, cable stuff I used to watch uh, in hotels r rooms when I was on the road. And I just looked at them and I said, they're both wearing red shoes, and one of them's making direct eye contact, and the other one's awkwardly looking away. It's like it, things come to you as I'm, as I'm painting them, and. Like that one, it's it's there's it's a man and a woman. So are are you like are they a couple? Are they not? Who's gonna be drinking this wine? Are they gonna be? Is it gonna be a first date? Are they gonna be um, having a good conversation or is it gonna be awkward? Um, bird brain is there's a woman that I painted looking up, which was sort of difficult, but I wanted it ultimately at the end to be vertical, or I mean horizontal. And I had a really crazy hairstyle for her to fill out the whole space. And then, you know, just walking up and down between the winery, I keep seeing the, the Von Beck uh, duck logo. So I tried to put the duck in her hair, but then it looks like a weird crow instead. So, so now she, I just call that one bird brain. Uh, there's, uh, there's dog bat, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's a dog that is laying on his stomach and he looks very tired and lazy and there's a woman looking in the same pose on top of him resting on him and it is a dog that has bat ears and bat wings i well basically i was painting the eight eight different paintings and i went back and forth between do i want to make eight paintings that look like they're in a series or eight paintings that are like totally different from each other sort of as if you know, eight different artists had painted it. And I had a little bit of ideas for certain paintings as I started them, but then for that one, I, I said, 
this is one that I just want to have complete fun with. Like for the painting with the head, I was like, I, I just want to have fun with this one. I don't want to think about it at all. I just want to just go like free form and throw paint and make a big mess and just let it dry. And then whatever I see that comes out of it, then I'll just keep pulling things out. So that one was, that actually is my favorite one because it, it just is madness and chaos and then, and then shaping it into something. In this day and age with technology and everything, if I could have my own like media empire where if I wanted to say something, instead of like waiting to be interviewed, like I could just say whatever I want. I could talk about my trip to Switzerland. I could talk about anything I want and there's no filter on it. And so that's what I did. I started it with uh, Asa Akira, who's performer of the year. She performed double vaginal, double anal. Once you've shown your butthole to the entire world, there's pretty much nothing you can hide behind. So she's a great co-host and I don't know, for me, that is my therapy. It's called DVD, <laughs> DVD ASA, which is short for David Asa, but it also stands for double vag, double anal sensitive artist. I have an addictive personality and I know um, idle hands are the devil's playground. If I, if I don't fill up my day nonstop, I am an addict and uh, you know, now it's moved from every bad habit into workaholic. Like if I'm not working, then if there's any opportunity for me to get into trouble, I will. I've been chased out of Kansas City. I'm not allowed in Canada. I'm not allowed in Japan. I almost wasn't allowed back into Afghanistan. So I figured out the perfect formula is to never leave the hotel or the place that I'm staying at when I travel. And, um, and so I don't like it when someone says I'm a writer, musician, actor, director, ball ballerina, you know, because when you do that, you can never be the best at one. And that's also why I'm not married. I avoided, uh, not that I don't have relationships, but I avoided marriage because I feel like, you know, the most gayest answer ever, I'm married to my art and I'm deeply committed to it. So to do anything else besides paint, to like spend time with someone and start a family would take away from the time it takes for me to paint. Like, uh, it's, it's all I do. It's just paint, paint, paint. But then I do other things. It, it, it's to keep it constantly moving. But um, I, have, I have problems with it because it's, you know, if, if you're trying to be a musician and a writer and this and that. I mean, I try, I try to do as much as I can, but um, that's just almost like, uh, an ADD thing to just keep keep everything moving constantly so that there's no time to actually think about important things like life and and uh, love and relationships then you're just working constantly and just making shit and then you just die <laughs> I think you're gonna kill me right now, but I have a crazy idea. But since you are a crazy guy, I thought you might like it. So why don't we just stack wine boxes on top of each other? We invite graffiti guys 
interpreting the, the wine um, with their art. And then we make a label out of this piece, put it on the bottle, into the box. Um, I have to say we had a few bottles while we had this idea. <laughs> More than one. Ivo said, Dominic, I think you're crazy, but I like it. Let's do it. I think that was the beginning, right? That was the beginning of the story. And I want to thank you for your friendship, but also for your crazy ideas. And of course, at the beginning, the first question is which artist we choose. And since I'm thinking that we are putting world-class wine inside, for me it was absolutely clear that we go international and got the best artists from our generation to paint on these huge canvases. Dominic, thank you for being my friend and thank you for your inspiration source. Huh? Thank you for your trust. Thanks, Dominic. <laughs> For over 2,000 years, wine has been made in the valley region of Switzerland. Grapevines thrive in the pure mountain air and are nourished by mineral-rich streams coming from the Alps. Cave van Beck is one of the premier wineries in the region and one of the producers of organic wines. A van Beck is a term used to describe a connoisseur or gourmand someone that truly appreciates good food, art, and good wine. Cav van Beck seeks perfection in making wine and strives to please all those that share their passion. The harvesting of the wine grapes is one of the most crucial steps in the winemaking process. Cav van Beck picks several grapes varieties at different times to be sure they are being harvested at the peak of their ripeness. The ripeness of the grapes determines the sugar, acid and tannin levels, and these qualities determine the style and characteristics of the finished wine. Cav van Beck chooses to handpick all the grapes that go into their wines, because handpicking grapes ensures that only the best quality grapes are harvested, and grapes that are not ripe do not make it into the wine. Once the grapes have been harvested, they are quickly crushed and separated from their stems, Special time and attention to detail is paid to the characteristics of the crushed grape. Measuring the sugar levels and other details of the freshly crushed juice are noted in order to ensure the quality of the finished wines. Carve van Beck makes many different wines and uses an array of different varieties of grapes to create classic wines as well as modern style blends. Some of the grape varieties used to create speciality wines are indigenous to the valley region of Switzerland and are a great discovery for wine drinkers that are used to only a few types of wine. The Bio Domaine Chateau Rouge is an organic red wine with ripe black currants and black pepper on the nose with a nice hint of oak. This wine is a blend of Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot grapes, and is a nicely structured wine. On the palate, it is very jammy, with a slight hint of clove. The Lentine Petit Davine is a white wine with a fruity nose of lemon and tangerine, with floral hints. On the palate, there is a nice acidity, with fine tastes of pineapple and grapefruit. The Biodomaine Chateau Blanc is an organic white wine, with an intense floral nose, with hints of fresh fruit and almond. On the palate, it has a soft, fine acidity, with hints of fresh-cut grass and candied fruits. The Corbassier Cornalin is red wine made from a grape native to the Valley region of Switzerland. The nose is very intense, with Morello cherry, black pepper and oak. The palate is also very fruity and jammy, with a hint of vanilla and oak. Pinot Noir is considered one of the finest and most subtle wines in the world. The nose is an intense blend of oak and ripe fruit with the hint of black pepper. On the palate it is fruity with an intense tannic structure with an oak finish. The Zavanis Johannesburg 
is a white wine made from Johannesburg grapes grown in the famous region of Valais called Chamoisson. The nose of this wine is intense, with white peach and almond, with some floral hints. On the palate, it is quite buttery with almond and vanilla, with a nice balance between sweetness and acidity. The concept behind the My Fanbeck project is to bring the world of street art and graffiti together with the art of winemaking. Eight graffiti artists from around the world painted the label designs for eight selected wines on canvases built from 84 wood wine crates. When the artwork was finished, the paintings were on display in a gallery in the winery until it was time to bottle the wine. Each painting is the artist's visual interpretation of one of the Carf van Beek wines. The art gallery served as a source of inspiration where art meets wine and where anyone visiting Carf van Beek could also enjoy these works of art. In late autumn, the wine was ready to be bottled. The eight paintings were then carefully dismantled case by case and then moved to be filled with bottles of wine. The bottling process begins by filling over 500 bottles for each wine. The wines have been aged in oak barrels until they have matured. The wine is then filled in each bottle and then moves through a mechanized process where the wine bottle is corked and sealed. The final touch is when the wine label with each respective artist's design is applied. At this point, the bottles are ready to be packed into the wooden crates with a side of the original artwork painted by the artist. Each wooden case is filled with six bottles of the limited edition wine, award-winning wine from Cav van Beek and original art from artists from all around the world. The cases are then packaged and boxed, ready to be shipped to anywhere in the world. The My Van Beck wine case is delivered directly to your door soon after the wine has been bottled. There are only 84 cases available for each wine, so this is a collectible wine with original artwork. These limited edition cases can be ordered directly from Cav Van Beck at www.myfanbeck.com. Hi, as you know, the company Van Beck is a small winery in Switzerland. And the idea we try to realize is much bigger uh, than our budget. <laughs> That's why we are very happy that we have some sponsors helping us to realize this. Uh, special thanks I want to give to the family Golo uh, that rented us a chalet for free for this week, the Mursak Authentic Chalet. As well, a special thank to our local energy supplier to install the fiber internet at my winery because we are out in the nowhere. So they really gave their best. Thank you very much, ASR. Uh, another one I want to give a special thank to you is Montana Cans. It's a German company. They delivered us all the spray David was using for free. So, and of course, all the other, I want to say thank you that buy a case of my wine supporting us this way. Thanks and looking forward to the next edition. Good. David Cho and the entire My Fon Beck team stayed at the Chalet Altitude 1600 in Nenda at the heart of the Swiss Alps. An authentic traditional Swiss chalet located on the ski slopes of the Four Valleys, one of the world's best ski resorts. 
Chalet Altitude 1600 offers stunning views in a tranquil location. With a modern style interior, this chalet has all the comforts of a home, including a fully equipped kitchen, Wi-Fi, jacuzzi, and hammam. A perfect retreat for business or pleasure all year round. Please visit our website at www.musacrentals.com. Salut tous les francophones d'abord, parce qu'on est en Malais. Et puis après, on va partir en anglais. So I want to introduce you to Frederick Udry. His artist name is Temes. And he was here last year with us, basically realizing the first piece coming in in the exposition. So, what kind of people you meet last year? when you did this exhibition and what were your impressions about it? So last year I had the pleasure to join the project and work with um, fellows and friends uh, Data and Jess. That, that was a pleasure to, to do it with them because they're good friends. And also I, I had the great honor and pleasure to meet uh, artists like Mud2, Revok, Askew, Phase 47 and ESO from Japan, uh, but also to name Dale, um, great guy. Um, that was a great time, <laughs> promoting wine and doing graffiti with uh, nice people, that was a great time. So you will do it again? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> sure. So I want to thank you to Frederick as well as Isam, who was the turning point of choosing all, all the artists. These are the pillars in Switzerland for the graffiti. So thank you and I hope you support us and you help us to go forward. And I'm counting on you for last year to welcome the next artist. Santé. Santé. Merci. Voilà. C'est tout.
j'avais besoin de me... Je préfère d'être spontané. Ok, c'est bon. You got it? Santé, mon cher. Santé. Pleasure to be with you. Mm, what an explosive aroma. Wonderful. Mm. Mm. Ah. Just great. Just great. It's like our country, isn't it? It is. We're sure. coming from Sweden down here, you know. Yep. <laughs> well, who would, who would have guessed uh, some 24 years ago that I would have ended up in this beautiful place? Yeah. Well, it's a great pleasure to have a chance to uh, try these fantastic wines and also be here with this super idea of combining it with art. Quite frankly, I wouldn't have dreamt of anything like this before we met a while ago when you talked about the opportunities. And it's actually sensational because if you think of it, how much energy goes into the art and how much energy goes into making good wine. Tell me. I don't know, how did you come up with that idea? <laughs> well, uh, basically I was inspired by Dominic. Uh -huh. And well, after a couple of bottles and you know how that is in life, you know. <laughs> Especially here in Valais, you know. We like uh, to go out and have a good drink, and this was one of these opportunities, and okay, that's the way, almost the way I, I met you. you know? <laughs> well, a coincidence, but it's a great, great way. I just think it's sensational to be able to take away a piece of art, a passion with you, when you also buy great wine, because you can combine and remember and think about it. So, to me anyway, it's a, it's a super, super thing. I think that's what I like most about the whole project is the idea of sharing, mm -hmm. sharing art. And I think the guys of the street art, the muralists, they really want to go out and share their art. And that's the same for me, you know. I'm trying to do the best wine I ever can do because I know they will be shared and people will like it. And it's all about sharing. That's great for me. Anyway. Thank you for coming down all the way from Sweden. Of course, with pleasure. And you know, uh, it's, it's not hard to get me to participate in great opportunities. <laughs> yes. And this is one, for yeah. sure. Good. I will uh, continue to uh, enjoy your wine. So. Thanks, Martin. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your friendship and everything. Thank you. Mm.
Well, all good things. I'm a little bit sad, but all good things have to come to an end. And I want to thank some people that did help me to make my Fanback 2013 happen. I want to start with Sebastian Martinet, that's the winemaker of our winery, and for his whole team, the team Fanback. They were outstanding, they were awesome, they did whatever they could give. Thank you very much to them. Thanks. The next I want to say a warm uh, thank you is my wife Yvonne and my two kids Delia and Dilo. I promise you I will be with you the next couple of days and we're gonna have a good time in the holidays. But especially my parents for always challenging me and pushing me to give the best of me. Thank you Adrian, thank you Rosemary. Well, and then the people who make this happen, that we are on live, I want to say thank you to Rebuild TV, especially to Alice, Alice Dayson, Sasha Krasczyk and Christopher Kurtney. They put so much passion and energy into my Fanback 2013. Believe me, you were outstanding. Santé. Merci. But thanks to all of you supporting this event here on stage, as well, online, on your digital devices worldwide. We can all share this experience together, and especially we all can enjoy it together. Thank you, Sante, Zumbul, cheers! David Cho and the entire Maifon Beck team stayed at the Chalet Altitude 1600 in Nenda at the heart of the Swiss Alps. An authentic traditional Swiss chalet located on the ski slopes of the Four Valleys, one of the world's best ski resorts. Chalet Altitude 1600 offers stunning views in a tranquil location. With a modern style interior, this chalet has all the comforts of a home, including a fully equipped kitchen, Wi-Fi, jacuzzi, and hammam. A perfect retreat for business or pleasure all year round. Please visit our website at www.musacrentals.com. Celui-là, c'est toujours mon préféré. 
pour les poules aussi. Ouais. Là, là bas on a le On peut acheter des 84 caisses. Non, mais ça, je t'ai dit, c'est pas possible. C'est un beau David Cho and the entire Mai Phan Bec team stayed at the Chalet Altitude 1600 in Nenda at the heart of the Swiss Alps. An authentic traditional Swiss chalet located on the ski slopes of the Four Valleys, one of the world's best ski resorts. Chalet Altitude 1600 offers stunning